uh, this uh, little video to maybe to update uh, or avoid misconceptions around uh, the mechanical features of, uh, of sprint acceleration. So I'm going to show you the data. So this is not an opinion. This is not a, you know, a, a social media thing or whatever. It's force plate data. So that's the gold standard and the reference measurement in biomechanics. In three exercises, a very high acceleration exercise. So that's my maximum sprint start. A low acceleration exercise. So that's a, a jog start. So a much less performance and skipping in place. So, you know, skipping in place, you're skipping and you're not moving basically uh, forward. So here, this is the example of the maximum acceleration sprint arts. So you see me uh, uh, pushing forward and moving forward on my force plates. And this is the traces of the two components in the sagittal plane of the ground reaction force. So the ground reaction force is a single force, but that could be divided into two components. So you see the vertical component. So that's the force that's directed vertically in black. And the gray component is the uh, horizontal anteroposterior, so AP component, the force that is directed uh, back and forth. So here what you see is that in the maximum acceleration, there's a high amount of vertical force, more than 100 and, uh, 1100 newtons, a high amount of vertical impulse, so the impulse is the force multiplied by the contact time, on average for the three steps. And you see that the mean horizontal force and impulse is much lower. So it means that, yes, the magnitude of the force is lower. And if you think about the ratio of force, so that's the percent of the ground reaction force that is going to be directed forward, so that's the percent represented by the horizontal component, it's about 24%. At the end of my push, my acceleration, the average acceleration of my center of mass is 3.9 and the final speed after three steps is 2.12. So that's my performance. Now I want you to understand that the magnitude of a force doesn't tell the importance to a given task. And the magnitude of the vertical component is, yes, higher than the horizontal component, also partly because it includes the effect of body weight and the gravity that is applying forward, uh, vertically, sorry. So if you stand still, you're applying a certain amount of force by definition. So now let's see the lower performance run. During the low performance acceleration, so I'm accelerating forward, but with much less performance, you see that the final speed after step number three is 1.5, so that's much lower. My average acceleration is much lower. The ratio of force is much lower, which means that my overall push was more vertically oriented. And what you see is that I have less horizontal force, clearly, much less horizontal impulse, but my vertical average force and my vertical average impulse is close or even higher. So I orient more my push forward and I have the same average vertical force or even higher vertical impulse, but this is not what matters. What matters here is that my horizontal force is much lower and this is what explains my lower acceleration performance. Now to show this with an extreme example, let's look at skipping in place. When you're skipping in place, by definition, you're not moving forward. So there's absolutely no speed or acceleration generated. So it's not surprising to see that the average horizontal force data is about zero. There was on average no net force produced. However, the vertical component is super high. That's the, that's the exercise where I produced the highest vertical component of the ground reaction force and a very high impulse. So the impulse is a bit lower than for the other exercises because the contact time is shorter. But what you need to think about in summary is that the magnitude of a force doesn't tell the importance in a given task. And so, yes, the magnitude of the vertical component of the force in accelerating, in sprinting, is higher than the horizontal component, but its importance is clearly lower. The important is the horizontal force, because when you're skipping in place, you don't have a net horizontal force, so you don't have a forward motion, whatever the intensity, the magnitude, which is very high, of the vertical component. 
And so I will take another analogy uh, from my uh, colleague and friend Pierre Samosino that says that, figure it out, in team sports, rugby, football, players walk 80% of the time. So their magnitude of walking movement is huge. Does it mean that walking is important, is a key performance indicator, and so that we should train them to walk more? No, because the magnitude of walking, the volume of walking is high, but the important exercise in team sports is acceleration, sprinting. So we need to focus on high-speed running and sprinting, not on walking, despite the highest amount of walking exercise. So this is exactly the same thing. So I don't say that vertical component is absolutely useless. You need it to stand and you need it to be able to run. I just say that the magnitude shouldn't be confused with the importance to the acceleration task. And so I won't go back to the, the extreme example that I showed during the COVID period, where here I'm not even skipping in place. I'm actually skipping backwards. So it means that there's a huge vertical component of the ground reaction force applied. Clearly, I don't have force plates, but, you know, do it on a force plate uh, and you will see. And that's not what matters, because what matters is that my horizontal component is overall negative. It's overall directed backwards. And this is what causes my motion backwards. So that's it. And uh, um, focus on what's important and remember Magnitude shouldn't be uh, mistaken with importance for a given mechanical task or for a given motion. Bye-bye.